Yeah, let's bring in right now uh, U.S. Senator Jean Shaheen. Uh, she is, of course, from New Hampshire and sits on the Armed Services Committee, also the Foreign Affairs Committee. You know, Senator Shaheen, we're talking about the short-sightedness of, of the president's trade wars, his unilateral trade wars. Uh, the last time I was down in Greenville, South Carolina, the mayor was walking me around the town. Uh, I grew up in the South, and I've seen Greenville grow from a, backwater, a sleepy backwater town to just this extraordinary automotive and aero, aerospace uh, hub. And he said, you know, the funny thing is, when you're walking down my old town in Greenville, South Carolina, and on Friday nights, guess what you hear spoken on Main Street? German, because they brought their, their families over here and they brought so much money to our region. They've revolutionized it. I, I just, I don't understand what Donald Trump doesn't get and what Republicans in that state don't get. Well, I don't understand it either. And it's not just um, South Carolina and states that have brought in big businesses to do um, auto um, manufacturing. In New Hampshire on Friday, I visited a small mead maker. Mead is a form of wine made with honey um, who had just lost a large deal with China that they'd been working on for months and months. They've had to lay off employees. They're also getting hit by the increased cost of aluminum because of their cans. And he's struggling because of this trade policy that makes no sense. It's something that's going to affect everybody, not just big businesses, but small businesses. Mike Barnacle. Yeah, Joe, and it's a policy that seemingly is carried out, concocted and carried out by a handful of people in the White House. Peter Navarro, President of the United States, a couple of other people, people like Senator Shaheen know very little about uh, the intricacies of the policy, why it was uh, outlined and put into place. But that's not the only policy. Uh, that we're worried about here, Senator. I mean, you're concerned about what happened in Helsinki, and you've called for the American interpreter who was in the room with President Trump and, and, and Vladimir Putin to appear before the Senate. But I would ask you, of course, there are a host of questions about what happened in Helsinki, but we don't yet know, do we, what happened in Singapore? Well, we don't. I'm looking forward to Secretary Pompeo coming before the Foreign Relations Committee tomorrow to have a chance to question him about Singapore, about what the follow-up steps have been and what the North Koreans are doing, but also what happened in Helsinki. You know, the point of trying to get the interpreter to come before the Senate is to find out what happened. Right now, the information we're getting about what happened in that meeting is coming out of the Russian Defense Ministry and other Russian government officials. I don't think that works for Congress. We have an oversight responsibility, and it certainly doesn't work for the American people. Senator, can you please, this is Heidi Presbella, can you please confirm for us whether or not Democrats and Republicans on the committee have been pushing for Pompeo to actually give a classified briefing as opposed to the briefing that you're getting tomorrow, which is unclassified because the concerns on the Hill are so significant at this point that you haven't been debriefed on all of these secret meetings between the right. president and foreign autocrats. And then secondly, what do you reasonably expect to get from Pompeo in the way of answers on the most important issues, given that the briefing is not classified? Well, I'm not sure whether the leadership of the committee is supporting a classified briefing or not. I think classified is appropriate. I think the important thing is that we get answers, and I don't expect that we'll get a lot of answers from Secretary Pompeo in an open hearing. Senator, do you think it's realistic that that translator will appear before Congress? There's been a lot of pushback from my Republican colleagues, but some people like Senator Corker have remained open to the idea. Again, the point is we need information about what was agreed to. Several weeks ago, Lindsey Graham and I were in Syria. We saw the gains that we have made working with the Syrian Democratic Forces in northern Syria along the Turkish border. The rumors are that those gains are at risk by what President Trump may have agreed to with Vladimir Putin in terms of turning over Syria to the Russians. So I think there are very real questions that affect our national security, that affect um, the commitments that we have made around the world, and we need to know what happened. It's not good enough to have 
Russian government officials saying what happened in that meeting, and we don't even know. And it appears that members of the administration don't know. Yeah, and astonishingly, we may never know exactly what happened in that room. Senator Gene Shaheen, thank you so much, as always, for your time. We appreciate nice it. Nice to be with you. Still to come this morning, new reporting says Michael Cohen's relationship with the president is eroding, thanks in large part to Jared Kushner, Don Jr., and Rudy Giuliani. Vanity Fair's Emily Jane Fox joins us with that reporting just ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.